Hello and welcome, I found something very interesting and I think you will find it interesting as well. If you have studied as I did, you will most probably hate those kind of pages. But I found an interesting one in the International Review of Financial Analysis. It's not overly complicated, it's straightforward and we will build and test their claims with Python. That's what this video is about. So let's jump right into it. So what is this paper about? Dated November 2021, so quite an old one. It's saying, we show a new predictive signal for cryptocurrency returns the last day's return. So it's straightforward. A good predictor for a cryptocurrency return is simply the prior day return. Then it says, the coins with low last day's return outperform their counterparts with high return. So they're comparing two groups here, low last day's return and high last day's return. Then, very important, they're also saying, the handful of largest and most tradable coins exhibit daily momentum. So this reversal, which they observed, is not applicable for large cryptocurrencies, which are, for instance, Bitcoin. So what we are going to do is test those claims in Python and see what we are getting. And we also check if something has changed. So this was covering everything until 2021. So let's see what was happening after that. So you see, was covering years 2015 until 2021. Just obviously they took a look at a lot of cryptocurrencies. So we are just checking out one, but you can extend that or we can also extend that together if you're up for it. Let's start with one cryptocurrency first. So you get an understanding of the concept. So we open up a notebook here and we need some libraries. So why finance to pull cryptocurrency price data? You can also take Binance or whatever you want for your preferred data source. Then we need pandas for data handling and NumPy to utilize some useful functions, which I will explain in the course of this video. Next, I'm just going to download Bitcoin price data that is BTC USD, and we are starting in 2015 as the authors did. With that, we get a data frame containing daily price data for Bitcoin. So you see rows are dates, then we have open, high, low, close values here. Just to give you a perspective what you missed out on, 2015, you could have bought a Bitcoin for 314 US dollar. Think about it and cry about it tonight. Or don't, I don't know. Next, we need to calculate the daily return. That's pretty much straightforward. So you just take the relative change here of the close column. So we are adding a column to this data frame call that red for return and then we take the close column and apply pandas percentage change function on it. You can also just uh, use a shift operation to achieve that, but that is quite handy to use. So you see we have a return column. So this is simply the change from this day compared to this day. All right, this to this day is this return and so on. Quite funny on this day, the Bitcoin was dropping by 10% uh, I just see here. Anyhow, you see we get uh, NAN value in the first row. So let's just get rid of the NAN value by just reassigning DF to DF drop NA. So with that, you see we have no NANs in the data frame anymore. Now, next important step is how do we decide what are low and what are high returns? Because just as a recap, they separate between low last day's return and high last day return. 
So what is a low and what is a high last day return? We don't know, but we have to do an assumption here. And a valid assumption is to sort those returns into buckets. So using percentiles for that. What does that mean? So for instance, if you take the 10% percentile, you sort all the returns which have the lowest 10%, which are the lowest 10% of the returns, you have it in one bucket. If you take the 90% percentile, you're getting the 10% highest returns. And NumPy has a quite handy function to achieve exactly that. So you take NP percentile and then you provide this column here. So dfred, then you provide what you want. So in this case, we want the 10% percentile. So what exactly does that do again? It is taking the 10% lowest returns in this return series. So from these 3.5k rows here. And that will give you this value. And this is a threshold value. So this value is the threshold for the lowest 10% returns, meaning 10% of all returns in this time period were below 3.49%. All right. And same story if you take the 90% percentile. Then you see 10% of the returns are above 4.06%. All right. So this is how it works. And you can do that with every number here. So if you take 20, you have 20% 20 of the returns are lower then minus 1.7% and so on. But in our case, we just take the 10% and the 90% here. So we're getting the lowest 10% and the highest 10% of the returns. And then we just assign that to low threshold is our 10% percentile. And the high threshold is our 90% percent percentile. So again, this minus three point something five percent and four point something percent. So these are our thresholds which we need to decide if a return is being assigned to the prior day low return or high return. So this one, low last day's return and high last day's return. And that is exactly what we're going to define now. So I'm going to call that signal. And this is just assigning a value to wherever a certain return belongs to. Now, if that return is below this low threshold, I'm just assigning it a one. If that is above the high threshold, I'm assigning that a minus one and every other return is getting assigned a zero, right? So that, that is simply an assignment operation, which I'm doing here to identify the returns, which are lower than the low threshold or higher than the high threshold. And there is a handy function for that, which is NumPy where, and with this function, you just pass a condition then the assignment value if that condition is true and the assignment value if that condition is false. So our operation here or our condition here, sorry, is just our return is smaller or equal to our low threshold. So with that, we identify all returns which are below our low threshold. So the 10% of the lowest returns. And for those we wanna assign a one. For those, and now we define a second condition here, taking again NumPy where, for those where the return is larger or equal to 
the high thresholds, then we want to have a minus one. And for everything else, we want to have a zero. All right, so this is just a warning, you can ignore that. So you see now, and you see it quite nicely here. You see that this return here is a minus 10% return, and that is below the threshold you just saw, and that is why you're getting a one here. Same for this one. This one is slightly, or not slightly, but above the lowest threshold and also the highest, below the highest threshold, right? So we had, for the highest, we had 4.06, and that is neither below the minus whatever it was, this one, 3.5, nor higher than the high threshold. So this is going to be assigned to zero, all right? And then we have a good example. It is quite a nice coincidence, by the way, that these values, so the first row values, are actually being assigned to one, zero, and minus one signal. So that was, wasn't even intended here for me. So you see now this is 4.2%. So this is being assigned to minus one and makes sense, right? Because the return is above the high thresholds here, right? That is 4.06 here. So I think you got the concept here, right? So we got an assigned signal dependent on whatever the return was. Now, to make things easier, I also wanna have the next day's return in the same row as the current return and the signal value. Reason behind that is in the step after that, I can just check, okay, for those where I have a signal one, get my next day's return and then check, is that return positive or negative? So how can we do that? How can we get the next day's return in the same row? We just shift this whole column one row back. So we are getting the next day's return here. So let's create a new column next, D return, and then DF red shift minus one. And then, by the way, just uh, in case you wonder how can I get rid of this uh, copy, you just, uh, sorry, of this error message, you just create a copy of your data frame, simple as that. So we're getting a new column here, next day return or next year return. And this is simply just the next rows return value here. So you're getting the next day's return in the same row as the assigned signal. And now we're doing what I just uh, said we're going to do, and that is simply screen for all the uh, signal values being one. And then you have all the values which are in the uh, low, uh, I always forget what the exact naming was, low last day's return group. So this one, and then you only need the next day's return as this is the value you care about because you wanna know, okay, when I'm in, in a, a highly bad return, what is my next day's return? So you just screen for those values here. So with that, you are just getting a series of the next day's return for all your one signals, that is your low return group. So let's assign that, so I'm not messing that up again. So this is the low red re return group here. And then we have the high return group, that is simply the signal being minus one and then same story, the next day's return. So what you're getting is exactly what I just showed you. So you are just getting a series of the uh, next day return for the low return group and for the high return group. So if the authors would be right now without taking any statistical significant and all that fun stuff into account, 
if the authors would be right, then the mean return of the low red group would be higher than the mean return of the high red group. All right, so let's test that. Mean return of low red, mean return of high red. So indeed the low return group mean is higher than the high return group mean here. Which kind of contradicts what the authors are saying because they were claiming that the largest and most tradable coins exhibit daily momentum. So they, what they see does apply to the large coins such as Bitcoin. Now let's take a look at the chart to understand what exactly was going on here. And what we are going to compare now is the cumulated return of the low re return group returns and the high return group returns. So to accumulate them, you just add a one and take the cumulative products and plot that. So that would just give you the cumulative return of your low red group and same story for the high red group. So this is looking like this and let's make that more meaningful by adding a label here. So that is the low red, that is the high red, then add a legend to it. And now this is making more sense. And this is a very, very interesting chart because it is confirming exactly what the authors observed and is also showing that the picture changed shortly after they published the article. So since then, not shortly after, but since they published the article, the picture has changed. So you see that indeed the high red group is outperforming the low red group all the time from 2015, maybe very occasionally not, but all the time, except those, those uh, uh, one, two, three moments here. The high return group is outperforming the low return group. So 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So the low return is always below the high returns. So I can perfectly confirm the observation that they are saying handful of largest and most, tra most tradable coins exhibit daily momentum because this is saying that when the previous day return was a high return, so was assigned to this high return group, I'm getting a better next day return as if I'm taking a low return value. All right. And now take a look at everything after 2021. You see that the low return becomes more relevant now. And ultimately, in the most recent time, so the last, say, one year, you see that the low return outperforms the high return. So let's actually drill a bit in here. So let's, let's see if you just go until 2023. And then you just execute everything again. You do this comparison and you see that the low red return mean is now distinctly higher than the high, high red group mean. All right, this is already a very interesting observation, but now the chart is going to be extremely interesting. And now we see that the low return group is outperforming, strongly outperforming the high return group here. All right. So I think this is a super interesting observation. I mean, if you're interested in more of that, let me know. I hope you found this as exciting, as interesting as I found this. And I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye-bye.